It's Tuesday the 14th of December and the time of recording for this is 2 o'clock in the afternoon so therefore I do have my delicious cup of coffee and did I mention the year just in case someone watches this in another 40 years it's 2021. Welcome to Back to the Future. If you think of, before we go into the topics, if you think of Christmas, it's sort of very strange. We all have this build-up for the big day, Christmas Day. And this is just a day when we don't have to work, presents, and it goes over in a flash. Then suddenly it's sort of like a big letdown because nothing happens after it in some occasion, if you know what I'm getting at. So Christmas is sort of like the build-up. Christmas is a holiday time, and that's what I pe think people look forward to. It's not just the actual day, it's the whole build-up and the Christmas period, and you don't have to work or study. So let's go into the first thing I want to talk about for today. And um, this is from a lady called Karen Reeves. Thank you, James, that people are so resilient going through this year after year. I wonder what it was like living there before the takeover. Well, the resilient people bit, Karen, yeah, it is remarkable. It is so amazing how strong people are. And you would say that people don't even know how strong they are. The uh, You live for survival. And I've just wanted to show you some pictures of these resilient people. Here is a resettled person, I'm not too sure, a child or an adult who got evicted from their home. Another one, you can see what life can be like after the floods, the free gorges. They don't have any transportation, sorry, anywhere of these floods. Transportation, so you just have to rely on boats. It can be like that. Another picture similar to that as well. There's so many you can find on Google. It is sort of heartbreaking, but these people are resilient. They rebuild and they start again. Unfortunately, sometimes they have to start again in the same area. But there are some bad people around. Like this lady here. Then when there is a flood, they go to the flood area or they go to an area with water and say, help me, help me, help me. And they put this on social media like Instagram or TikTok or whatever they have in China. Douyin would be the main one. And come and support me. Donate money to me. I've lost my home. I've lost my floods. And this is not just one person. You can see this guy here, for example, as well, doing exactly the same. But then the resilient people we respect and honour and admire in a way that they've lost things, but they survive not just for themselves, but for their family. Let's take a little break. So let's go into the title of this. And China admits free gorges that have caused host of ills. And yes, it is time for a little bit of reading. China's free gorgia dam has caused a host of ills that must be urgently addressed, the government has said, in a rare ambition of problems in a project that has been long praised for a world wonder. Council or cabinet acknowledged the environmental, social and geological problems in a statement issued late Wednesday after a meeting on the hydroelectric project's future presided over by Premier when, while the Free Gorges project has brought great and comprehensive benefits, there are problems that must be urgently resolved in the smooth relocation of residents, ecological protection and preventing geological disasters, it said. The impacts of the dam, downstream shipping, irrigation, water supplies, this statement continued to say. Authorities have hailed it as a major new clean source of energy and the way to tame the notorious flood-prone Yangtze, China's longest river. But critics long warned of its environmental, social and other costs. About 1.4 million people were displaced to make way for the dam in the huge reservoir, 
which has put several cultural heritage sites underwater, deep underwater. Chinese experts and officials have warned the potential for seismic disturbances, including landslides and mud flows caused by the massive weight of the reservoir's water on the region's geology. Environmentalists have cautioned the reservoir could would serve as a giant catchment by China's notorious pollution, running water ruining, running water quality. The government said this last August that billions of dollars would need to be addressed in the damage of the river, including sewage treatment. State media reports that the garbage was so thick in places that it could be walked on and threatened to clog the dam. China is relying on hydroelectric power as a major component in the energy mix as it seeks to meet soaring power needs. It has dozens of dams either under construction or on the drawing board, according to state media reports. These articles I find are, how would you say, these articles that I have found sort of like do talking the talk and not walking the walk in any way, shape or form. That they talk about it, say, yeah, okay, it's a great dam, blah, 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 but the environmental problem, blah, 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 and what do you see them do about it? Very little indeed, apart from 50,000 sturgeon that got put into the dam. It's more construction about the ship's locks and saying how wonderful they are. It's about the logistics of goods can go from Shanghai all the way up to Chongqing, like 2,000 kilometers up the road, etc. That's what I find annoying, that there's lots of talk and they kind of make themselves like goody-goody two-shoes. The Chinese government make themselves like that. But nothing happens. It's just talking. They get paid a bucket of money to talk. And if there is any money, it usually goes to a corrupt official, lower down the rank, so to speak. Thank you very much. I just do a little bit of work. It looks good. And then everyone's quiet again for another five years. Oh, yeah, the China five-year project. <laughs> now, moving away from the dam, a little bit later on, I am going to be talking about this, the National Endowment for Democracy, and this is related to the Uyghurs. Now, I did do a poll on YouTube, and I haven't closed the poll. I will check it maybe a little bit later, but I've already done the sort of background work for the show. And the, the question was quite confusing, actually, but you can go and check it out in the poll. And you can go and see the video I did yesterday about it. And don't forget to buy a mug, which is more important because it can help a child for a moment or two in their life in this country have a smile. Quite simply, buy a pair of shoes, buy a shirt, buy a nice healthy meal. My name is James. Thank you, as always, for your time. Ali Fidurci, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.